every part of the tohora is made use of to honour the life of that tohora. Tohora, ko ngā rangatira o te moana. Every nation in the Pacific has a relationship with Wales. From their final resting place on our shores, they're given life again through these taonga, a mihi to the unbreakable connection Māori have with the moana. That taonga is carrying the voice of that tohora across generations. We had a beautiful blue whale come in in 2021 in our tribal area here in Taranaki Iwi. This whale was a tipuna kuia. So Te Karuo Koteoteo was a, a baleen whale rather than a, a toothed whale. The process of revitalising that practice of working with the baleen and the sinew has been based on knowing that um, our tupuna made use of every part of the tohora. Those practices have been lost for generations. Sinew is the fibrous tissue connecting the muscle and bone. This is what it looks like after it's been dried and processed. It's organic material. It still goes through a process of change and components of it breaking down. So it's getting the material to a point where it's stable so that it can be worked. You didn't know how to do that at the start? Uh, no. <laughs> It was a real process of experimentation and, and trialling, really. Muopoko carver Sean Montgomery Newts worked closely with Ngahina to learn the ropes. This is a piece of the baleen in its raw form. The next stage would be processing it, cleaning it off, but it's essentially a section of the baleen here. And that's from inside the mouth? Yes. Yeah. The filters on the baleen whale. What's the texture like? Well, it's keratin, so similar to your fingernail, but um, a lot thicker. You know, you can sort of see there are uh, multiple sort of plates stacked together. These will be separated off, cleaned off and processed. And from the body and bones of the Taranaki whale, Te Karuo Ko Teo Teo, these taonga were born. This part here is the baleen. Called them poihihi because the, you know, hihi is the the kupu for baleen. When we create taonga puoro or poihihi, that taonga is carrying the voice of that tohora across generations. Here at the prestigious Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture, they plan to showcase their taonga Māori to the world. Ngahina Shan, along with respected carvers Bernard Makuare and Rangi Kipa, travel to Hawaii but their taonga did not. We had the situation where only a matter of days before traveling, we got the letter, US Customs permits declined. Doc was gutted that we couldn't help the artists in this particular case to be able to travel with their taonga. This is where the rubber hits the road. The Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species, or CITES for short, was introduced by the UN in 1975 to protect endangered species globally. Almost all marine mammals, including whales, are protected under this convention. So taking taonga made out of whale material in or out of the country is near impossible. However, if US Customs was prepared to allow the taonga in, Doc would have issued a permit to let it out. Why were those permits declined? The US law does not allow any whale bone or whale specimens to be imported. No exceptions? No exceptions. Unless the whale material is from before the law came into effect. Without an import permit, there was nothing that we could do. And so we had to kind of quickly pivot and create something, a, a bit of an activation. It was Shan's first time at the festival. They had to show photos of the taonga instead. We did literally have red tape stuck to the photos and of course, people picked up on that immediately. This is a Pacific wide problem. We know Fiji has suffered from the same sort of problems that we have with tambua or the whale tooth. 
We know that Hawaii had the, exactly the same thing with the Reiniho or Leiniho Palawa. These indigenous creatives want to share their taonga freely. We're constantly going to be told by politics that it's too hard, there's too many things to do, too many barriers. CITES means that that's just too hard, so just don't do it. You know, find an alternative. And we're going to say to them, well, you know, that's not good enough. Does it serve us to be part of this international convention when it hinders Māori? So look, I think the answer to that is absolutely yes, because we would not want a free-for-all on the um, trade in um, our precious species, like kākāpō or whales that come to our shores or other indigenous species as well. DOM is exploring options, although nothing has been formally proposed. There is an exception, for example, in CITES around musical instruments. And, you know, we're wondering whether there is something that could exist, something like a cultural items passport. Domestically, there is still constraints around the actual harvesting of whale material. It's illegal without a permit. In the early days, in the 80s, when whales would wash up, it would be standoffs on the beach between the representatives of the Crown who own <laughs> the mammals when they beach and the people who have connection with those places, the tangata whenua. Ultimately, it is wrong that for us to embody our customary practices, we're seen as breaking the law. The use of tohora materials is going to continue. So there are a range of domestic laws that impact on that. The government of the day and the parliament can look at making changes. It's more than art. This is Whakapapa. The material of whale teeth is, is just a stunning material. There's nothing like it. It forces you to, to do something that's greater than what you did before. You know, you talk to any Māori person that wears a taonga, it's not just an accessory. It's something that's emotionally really important to them. And actually, all we're trying to do is reflect our own natural heritage and our birthright.